All right, so this is my informative speech, and my topic is the history, legacy, and problems with the handheld industry. Um, just for an introduction, uh, I grew up having a video game. I'm pretty sure we all grew up having a video game or a sibling, cousin, someone who had video games growing up. Uh, I always had handhelds as a gamer, uh, but within this speech, I will tell you why the legacy of video games is dying, what we can do to help that, what companies should change, and how we can start to bring Generation Alpha back into it. So, first things first, let's get into some history. Revolutionary, okay? So, we start off in the 70s and the 80s, and then in 1972 or 76, the, that, that time period, uh, Sega releases its Sega 1000, which is the first household um, all gaming console, not a handheld, but a console. Same thing with the Odyssey by Magnavox and the NES by Nintendo in 1983. Moving on, we have the first handhelds ever made. Surprisingly, they were made by Mattel. Yes, that is the company that makes Barbie. Um, but before that, they made electronics. So we have the auto race the world champion football and classical football for Americans. Of course, we all know that much, right? We can see, you know, we have to have our football. So then we move on up. We're in around 1981 to 1982 with Nintendo releasing its first handheld sort of, um, it is the game watch. So the game watch was a series of other little games that compound onto each other. So this was Game & Watch, the actual game. And then the next one is Super Mario. And then the other one was Legend of Zelda to introduce children to gaming. But let's get into the present now. So that was the history. But let's get into where the legacy truly starts for handhelds. So where we're at right now is the Nintendo DS. The year 2000 is around us and everything is going great. Britney Spears, a lot of pop culture. Yes. Um, going into that a little bit more, um, it was around 2004 when it picked up in America. So for this blue model here, we are doing a lot of Mario Kart, uh, Mario Party, Super Mario. All those type of Mario games are getting really, really popular. And then a few years later, they released the DS, which is this aqua blue one over here. Um, it is actually the second best-selling video game ever. Like it's the second best-selling video game console ever with 154 million sales, beating everything else but the PlayStation 2. Yes, the PlayStation 2 was actually better than the DS. Very hard to believe, I know. Mm -hmm. So we're getting to some other handhelds. Um, there, There is the PlayStation 5 Portable that is out now. It was released about a month ago. We have the PS Vita. The PlayStation P, which is the PlayStation Portable, the original one. And we have the Sega Game Gear. The Sega Game Gear came out in around the 1990s, but it was a big flop, just like most of Sega's consoles, unfortunately. Um, let's get into that problem of why consoles are not as big as they used to be, save the handhelds. As you can see in this chart, Gen Alpha is 52% of players. This is great. This is amazing. Oh, wow. They're gamers. But when we look and concentrate into more what they're doing, we can see that 33% of them are mobile players. This means that a lot of them are not even playing console. And the 27% that's playing console is most likely anywhere from PS3 all the way up to PS5 or Xbox 360 to Xbox series. So they're later, the, the newer consoles is what I'm saying. As you can see, what they like to do is exploration of open world and game theme or setting. The handhelds are notorious for not having these features be accessible. There are very few games on the handheld that are exclusive to the handheld and are open world or game theme settings. Some of those examples would be Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Distidia, amazing game. Persona, there is a Persona version that's only on the DS, so that's really good open world and theme or setting. Moving on to the prices. So this is another reason why the handhelds aren't as popular because we have the 3DS XL on our left and the PlayStation 5 on our right. These are the latest handhelds in today's time. As you can see, they're in the $200 to $300 range. This is just not doable for the average person in this economy. 
So moving on, Generation Alpha and the legacy of video games. Gamers, they don't really gain much. Attention span is low. Instagram reels, TikTok, 10 second videos. What more is there to say? These are the games that usually Gen Alpha plays, Fortnite, Clash of Clans, and Call of Duty Mobile. Not much is going on in these games. It's very battle royale, very shoot, die, move on. The solution, uh, audience adapting. The biggest problem here is that they do not adapt to their audience. There is no adaptating at all for Nintendo because they're releasing things like the Nintendo Switch, but the Nintendo Switch is clearly for teenagers to adults. It's not for children. There are not a lot of children games. This is their audience. This is Generation Alpha. On the left, we have some fourth graders. On the right, we have some 12-year-olds. These are clearly their audience because that is at Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha is from 2010 to now. And this is the audience they're trying to appeal to. But it's very hard to do that when you're, you're not picking up on their generational signals that they put out. Also, bundling. Bundling was something that's very big back in the day. If you bought a console, it would come with the game. Or if you bought a console, it would be themed or colored a certain way that only that model has. So there's no more of that usually. Now, now Nintendo Switch does have a Mario edition, but it's skyrocketing and it's different prices. But back in the day, these would be the exact same price. They wouldn't be any different or they'd just be that price and then the game added on to that price. So... I think that's something that they should definitely do in the future. Also, Sega. In the end, Sega's amazing, um, but this is the biggest downfall of companies in general, is that they get money hungry. And this is what happened to Sega. After flop after flop, it was very difficult for them to grasp back into console making. So unfortunately, they downgraded to being a video game developing company. And so... Now they just make video games, but are they the best video game makers? Yes, but they don't make any good consoles because they flopped back and forth. No one bought them. No one liked them. So that is my presentation on the history of video games and handhelds and the legacy and how we can fix that. I hope you enjoy that in the conclusion. I hope you um, enjoy my knowledge and I hope you enjoy this new information. I hope you learn something and I also hope that you can Cherish your technology now because it will change, it will be gone, and it will not be passed on to the next generation. Thank you.